Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the house of the Lord today. We appreciate your presence. We welcome everyone, members and visitors alike. I'm glad you're here with us at Northside today. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. If you get on your phone and call a friend, have them to tune in and get this hour, we'll try to be a blessing to them. This is Mother's Day, and we want to wish the best for all of our mothers today. May God bless you in the radio listening audience as well as you here in the auditorium. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 2 for the reading of God's Word. I'm going to speak to you today on this thought, an ideal mother. We find listed here an ideal mother. On the second Sunday of May, we observe Mother's Day each year. The founder of Mother's Day was Anna M. Javis. Her mother, Ann Rees Javis, died on the second Sunday in May 1905. Two years later, Anna invited some friends to her home in Philadelphia to commemorate the anniversary of her mother's death. It was then that she told of her plans to make Mother's Day a national observance. So you turn to Luke chapter 2 for the reading of God's Word. We are taping the end time morning service. And this tape will be tape number 229. If you write in and request the tape, we send it to you for a gift of $3 to help defray our radio expense. We have a list of more than 220 some odd tapes. Be glad to send you a list of our cassette tape that can be a blessing. And you write in and request a list. We'll send you a list and you can select the tapes or the numbers. You request them by number or by title. Now you pray for me and write to me because this is a home mission work, a ministry of love, when endeavoring to get out the gospel. Received a letter last week. A lady said, Preacher Edward, send me two of your tape. She named the tape. She said, one of your tapes was used in prison to reach 11 people for Christ. And I feel that the tape I'm requesting will be used to reach more than 11 for Christ. So we never know what's been accomplished through our tape ministry and radio ministry. And you write to us, pray for us, and stand by us. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. Now here in Luke chapter 2, I begin reading with verse 41. At the close of the service today, we're going to recognize all of our mothers by having them to stand. And then we're going to recognize and honor the oldest and youngest mother we have present today. Now Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days... As they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolks and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. All that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish ye not I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the sayings which he had spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Now the ideal mother today is found here in this scripture I read in your hearing, and her name is Mary. She's a woman that gave birth to the Son of God. Now here you have the first recorded words of Jesus ever spoken right here in this scripture. When he was a child of twelve, you notice what he said. Those are the first Recorded words that you find. Now they left him there in Jerusalem. 
They went a day's journey, but took three days to find him. And they tried to find him among their kinfolks and acquaintances, but could not. Oftentimes, that's the wrong place to find Jesus. It would be good if you could always find Jesus among your relatives, but that's not true every time. So I want to speak about this ideal mother. She had much to offer. We have here depicted before us the actions and reactions of a true mother in the face of problems. Now I want you to keep that in mind, in the face of problems. I don't think there's ever been a time when there's so many problems among mothers today and in homes today as you find in this hour. Just the other day I received a letter from a dear lady. I think she wrote about three or maybe four pages. And every one of those pages were filled with problems she was having in her home uh, among her children and so forth. And she was requesting prayer for these problems. Now, mothers today, they have problems. Their problems are very heavy. Their children today are facing things and temptations that we did not face back when I was a youngster growing up. There's so many things today to entice and lead your children astray and cause them to act and do contrary to what you want them to do. They see so many things on TV until they, it leads their minds astray and gives them the wrong ideas. And they want to try to keep up with the world and, and try to be with the crowd. It makes it uh, tough sometimes upon parents, upon mothers to try to keep their children in the fold and keep them on the right track. First of all, we have here a mother in sorrow. I don't know how many mothers we have today it's in sorrow because of their children or their lost companion or uh, because of problems they have in the home or uh, because of problems in the community or uh, maybe on the job or whatnot. But there's a lot of mothers today that are suffering with problems maybe they never let anybody know anything about. Now you would be surprised at the mothers today that keep their problems and troubles to themselves. They don't breathe them. They say nothing about them. They go ahead and carry that burden and that problem in their hearts. Many mothers like that today. In verse 48, And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us thusly? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Now they sought him sorrowing. No doubt they had grief in their hearts, maybe even to the shedding of tears, because they couldn't find him. The Lord Jesus, their son, was there in the temple in Jerusalem, and they had gone a day's journey and had looked for him for three days before they found him. Now, God alone knows the sorrowing mother on this earth who's gone through over their children. That is the sorrow she's gone through over her children. Only God knows that. Maybe the husband doesn't realize the amount of sorrow that the wife has gone through or the mother's gone through because of the children. She never says anything about it many times. She lays awake at night and worries and prays and weeps over her family. And maybe the husband knows nothing about that. Now, many years ago, there was a dear woman, and this is only a story, illustrate a point. Her son was going with a promiscuous a woman, and, and her mother said, Son, that you're a good boy. You don't need to be going with a girl of that type, and you shouldn't be thinking about marrying a girl of that type. And the boy had fallen in love with this girl. She had lived a wild, reckless life. And so the girl found out the boy's mother didn't like her. And she hated the boy's mother for it. And the girl said to the young man, she said, If you love me and you want me, I want you to murder your mother, tear her heart out and bring it and show it to me. The boy went home, murdered his mother, took his heart in his hands and started back to his girlfriend's house. On the way over there, he stumbled and fell. And his mother's heart cried out and said, Son... Are you hurt, my boy? Son, are you hurt? Now, beloved, we need to realize that many times mothers undergo testings and trials and heartaches that people know nothing about. Secondly, we have here a mother burdened about her boy. All true mothers carry burdens about their sons. Now, she was burdened about Jesus here. Many things she hid in her heart. She didn't tell Joseph about it, no one else. But there's many things about Jesus maybe she didn't quite understand. Many things she did understand. And she pondered them in her heart. The Bible said she did so. She pondered them in her heart. Kept them in her heart and mind. And nobody knew about it. Old Mel Trotter's mother was a very gracious and kindly woman. A consecrated woman. And also he had a consecrated wife. Old Mel Trotter became a great mission worker. 
and worked in missions and won multitudes to God and homeless people he helped take care of. But before he was saved, he was a wretch. He was a red-eyed drunk. He was a person that would beat his family. He was a person that would spend all of his money on booze. And it seemed like that he didn't care what happened to his family. He was a man on one occasion that he took money that they'd given him to go buy medicine for his little daughter. And instead of going to the drugstore and getting the medicine, he took that money and bought some booze and got drunk again. His little daughter died. And while a little body lay in the casket, he went in and stole the little shoes off of her feet and the money they had laying on her eyes to hold her eyes closed. It did that in olden times. And he picked up that money, went out and sold those shoes and took the money stole off his dead baby's eyes and went and bought lick and got drunk again. When he began to sober up and realize what he had done, he took a pen and scratched blood out of his own veins and wrote in his own blood, I'll never get drunk anymore. But he did. He got drunk again. One cold wintery night, with old ragged clothes on, long matted beard and hair, he was started to the river then Chicago to jump in and commit suicide. On the way to that river, he passed by a rescue mission, and he heard some singing on the inside. So he stopped. He sat down on the back seat, and there they sang beautiful hymns. There the preacher preached the word of God and told about the love of God. When he gave the invitation, old Mel Trotter, old bum, ragged, stinking clothes, long beard, matted hair, red-eyed, went down to that altar, fell down on his knees and gave his heart to God, got up and gave a wonderful testimony. Mel Trotter became a mighty, mighty preaching missionary to the glory of God. But before he was saved, some people went to his mother and said, Woman, you're a fool to waste your prayers on a wretch like that. He doesn't deserve you praying for him. He's a wretched bum. I wouldn't pray for him anymore if I were you. His mother began to weep and said, Listen, said that's my boy. That's my son and I love him. Now I'm going to pray for him till God saves his soul. That's a real heart and burden of a mother that loves her children. Then number three, we have here a mother whose son was lost. The Bible said that when a day's journey, three days journey, when a day's journey without him, and it took them three days to find him again. There's a great lesson involved here. You can get away from God in a day. It might take you three days to get back to God. It's a lot easier to get away from God and out of fellowship than it is to get back into fellowship with God. They went a day without him. took three days for them to find him again. Every mother should be filled with sorrow for her own sons. They tried to find him among their kinsmen. Many times as you start looking for God among your kinfolks, you'll be disappointed many, many times. Would to God you could find Jesus in the hearts of all of your kin. But you won't do that. They couldn't find Jesus among their acquaintance and kinfolk. And they went back and they found him in the house of God. They found him where they left him. Many people today sitting out in the radio listening audience, many people at home today should be in the house of God. They're wondering why they're having problems and why the chasing of God's up on them, why everything seems to go wrong. They can't understand. They'll come back to the house of God and line up with God where they left God. Things might be different. And so we find this mother, she had this boy up on her mind, the son that was lost or that they'd left behind there in the temple. There was a mother one time that had a wayward son and he was a kind of a roughneck, kind of a fellow lived out west. Back in those days, they would hang a man for stealing a horse. And so she couldn't find her son. She wondered, what in the world happened to my son? Every day she looked for him, but she couldn't find him. She inquired in every village and every home she could. She couldn't find her son. She said, I'm going to get in the buggy. I'm riding until I find my son. She got in the buggy. She rode down the dusty road. She drove for many, many miles. One day she came by a field, a big old tree out in that field, and a large group of men around that tree. When she came very near, she saw what was taking place. They were hanging a man under that tree. And so she got out of a buggy. She went up. Up eventually they might know something about her son. And when she came near and spotted the man hanging that had hanged from that tree, that was her boy, and he was dead. They hung him there because of crime he'd committed. That mother pushed her way through that crowd. She began to cry. She walked up. She put her arms around that body. And she kissed those cold blue lips 
And she said, uh, I don't know what he's done, men. He may have deserved what you have done, but I want you to know this is my boy. This is my son, and I want you to know that I love him. Yes, mothers love their children regardless of what they do. Many of them break their hearts. Many of them get into serious trouble. Many of them bring uh, many heartaches and disappointments to their home and life, but they still love them in spite of these things. Number four, we have here a mother baffled at her son's report. In verses 49 and 50, And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. They were baffled. He said, Wish you not. Don't, can't you understand that I need to be about my father's business? And they were baffled. They were perplexed. They couldn't understand why he would be speaking like that. And her, the mother held that in her heart. She couldn't understand it. He was talking about a God the Father, not Joseph. Many years ago when I was in grade school, the teacher tried to be religious and, and she wanted to say a few things religiously. And she was talking about this incident. She said, you know, I can just see little Jesus right now there in his father's house about his father's business with a little hammer and saw. Well, he wasn't talking about that at all. He was about his heavenly father's business and they didn't quite understand it. Uh, but he told them, said, you should don't know, wish you not, don't you understand? I'm here in this temple with these preachers, these doctors, these lawyers about my father's business. And these are the first recorded words of the Son of God ever put in print. You ought to read them and meditate upon them and just see what they really mean. Number five, we have here a mother of great wisdom. This ideal mother, Mary, had great wisdom. Verse 51 but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. She remembered the things he said. She remembered the things he did. She remembered how he acted. They were in her heart. And you mothers today sitting out there, your mind can go back and, and you can remember things that your son did when he was growing up. You can remember things he said and, and you think about them. They amuse you now as you think about them. As they grew up, just little toddlers on up until they were grown. You can remember many, many things that you hold in your heart that your boy said to you that he did and, and they even bless your heart as you think about them now. And she had great wisdom. Wise is a mother that keeps the blessings and secret things about her children in her heart. She doesn't let them out. She holds them there and she's wise because she can pray about them and work out things through prayer. She can never accomplish any other way. That was a great statesman yonder in Atlanta many years ago. Great editor, great newsman. There a great businessman, Christian gentleman. He was born and reared away out in the country. His name was Henry Grady. You remember that name, don't you? Henry Grady. And there he had employees working there in his office. And many times Henry Grady would become depressed. He had a godly mother that lived away out in the country. She knew what that boy liked. She knew what it took to lift him up and help him and encourage him. One Friday, he said to his employees, he said, I won't be back until over the weekend. I'm going to see my mother. And they knew he'd been depressed all the week, and, and they were glad for him to go. And when he arrived at a little old country home, his mother met him, and she said, Henry, I'm just so glad you come to see mother today. And she took him by the arm and went in the house, and they talked and carried on. Now, she knew exactly what to do to lift that boy up. She went out to the old smokehouse and pulled down one of those old-fashioned country hams. I mean one that'll make the dogs howl for three miles around when you start cooking it. She came in with that old country ham. She cut off some big uh, chunks right out of the heart of it. She put it on the big iron stove, fired the stove up, cooked some of those big old cat head biscuits, made some good red-eyed gravy, and set that table and put the good ham and everything that he liked on that table. And he sat down and... They began to talk and, and he began, his spirit began to revive and he enjoyed it so much, good old blackberry pie and things he loved when he was a little boy. And then when he got ready to go to bed, uh, he went upstairs to go to bed and mother came behind him and she said, son, you remember what mother used to do when you were a little boy? She said, yes, ma'am, mama. All right, we're going to do that tonight. She said, son, get out on your knees. He got out on his knees and mother took the old family Bible and there she read the word of God. And there she said, God bless my boy. He's not here with us any longer, but he has a business, a great responsibility. Lord, I want you to bless him and take care of him. 
Watch over him in his business and guide him step by step. Henry Grady went back home the first of the week, went back to his job, brother. Man, he was on cloud nine. He went in and gleeful and ecstatic because uh, he had been to see mother as she knew what to do for him because she reared that boy as she did more for him than any doctor or drugstore could ever do. And he was a different man. A good mother usually knows what to do for her children when they are in need. Number six, we have here a mother meditation. The Bible says she pondered them in her heart. It's good when mothers have time to pray for and ponder the problems in their heart in regard to her children. When they come with their problems, are you willing to think about them and ponder them in your heart, take them in consideration? Or would you kindly slap them and kick them and say, get away from here, don't bother me today? Are you willing to take their little problems and they'll think about them and figure out a way for them that will help them and be a blessing to them? I hope so. Someone has said a mother's love is second to the love of God. We do know a mother's love is strong even in the animal world. A mother's love is strong. Oh, mother hen will fight till she dies for those little chicks. A dog will fight until she dies for those little pups. A cat will fight till she dies for those little kittens. Out in the world, the animal world, the mother loves her babies and she'll fight until she dies. Many years ago, there was a young boy that grew up in the community and he was a kind of a freak. He had no ears. He grew up without any ears. He's greatly embarrassed. And when he went to grade school, the people got accustomed to seeing him. He became an athlete, and he's good and in every field. He's a nice boy. And they didn't pay that any attention because he had no ears. But when he finished high school, mother and dad said, Son, we want you to go to college. He said, I can't go. They said, Yes, you can, son. We'll pay you away. He said, I can't. They said, Why? He said, Well, they're used to me here in the school, the high school where I attended. And if I go to college, I, they'll laugh at me and... Um, Look at me and gaze at me and say, I just can't do it. And it broke their heart. And then mother and dad heard about a German doctor from Germany that could take ears from an individual and place them on a head where a person had no ears in New York. They drove all the way to New York and consulted that physician. He said, yes, I can uh, transplant some ears, put them on his head. They look natural. Nobody will never know he's born without any. And uh, but said, I got to have some ears to do it. And so they began to think and pray. And, and then... Uh, one day, her mother was missing for a while. The boy thought nothing about it. And, and then the doctor called from New York and said, uh, bring your boy and come to New York. And they went to the hospital. And there he put some ears on that boy's head. You couldn't tell he wasn't born with ears. He had small scars behind him and nobody ever noticed him. And then he went to college. And he was a great athlete in college. Everybody thought about it. He's a natural born leader. And then while he was in college, his mother died his dad wrote and called her and said, Son, come home. Mother's passed away. And the boy went home. And when he walked in, they wept with his dad. And his dad said, Son, I want you to go with me in and look at mother. And mother, for some reason, the boy didn't know, started letting the hair grow long and down the side of her face. And he couldn't understand that. He never asked any questions. And he went in. They looked at her in the coffin. She's very beautiful. And daddy said, Son, I know you wondered why mama let her hair grow long on each side of her face. I'll show you why. He reached down and pulled back that hair, and his mother had no ears. She had donated her ears for her son that he might be able to go to college and there get an education. He began to weep. He said, Mama, Mama, you love me so. I'll never, I'll never get over the, the way you love me and sacrifice to me. He realized what his mother had done. Number seven, we have a mother who was a great success. In verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. So here we find she was very successful in the way she stood by her son. It was Mary that stood by the cross and watched her son die on that cross. And there a sword penetrated her heart as well as his side. Now when that sword went into the side of her boy hanging on that cross, they might as well stuck that sword in her heart. Simeon said it would pierce her heart also. And she stood by him as they hang on the cross. On the day of Pentecost, after he had gone back to heaven, when they waited for the coming of the Holy Spirit, you'll find the mother of Jesus right there in that crowd. That's the last place she's mentioned in the Bible. Jesus said to John on the cross, said, Behold thy mother. That meant, John, you take her with you and take care of her and give her a home. Evidently, Joseph had died sometime during his lifetime. And so you take her with you. And tradition tells us that John the Beloved 
When he went to Ephesus and spent many years at Ephesus, pastoring that church at Ephesus, Mary was there and lived with them, and she died over in Ephesus, tradition tells us. But anyway, she is concerned about her son while they hang there on the cross. Abraham Lincoln said, No man is poor who has a godly mother. You need to realize that no man is poor who has a godly mother. I'll never forget about uh, Dr. Bob Jones Sr. Dr. Bon Bob Jones Sr. lived in South Alabama. He had to go away to school when he was a little boy. There the colored slave would put him on a wagon and carry him away to school. And after the week, I had to go pick him up and bring him back. And Dr. Bob said when he was just a little boy in little knee pants, he was to leave for school one day. And they walked over to kiss mother goodbye. And she was sick and in bed and couldn't get up. And, uh, and said the last thing his mother said to him when he got ready to leave. She said, Bobby, I want you to be a good boy. Bobby said, Mom, I will. And he kissed her goodbye and left her. That's the last time he saw her alive. Many times, Dr. Bob said, you know, I told my mother I'd be a good boy. And said, I've tried to be a good boy all these years. He said, one of these days, I'm going to leave this world. I'm going to heaven. And said, when I get to heaven, I believe my mother's going to meet me and say, Bobby, were you a good boy since I've been gone? I want to be able to say, yes, mama, I've been a good boy. The old man built Bob Jones University and now gone on to be with the Lord with his mother over on the other side. Old Daddy Brock, a great preacher up in Shelby, North Carolina, his mother lived away out in the country. And many times he'd get in the buggy to go pay a visit. She lived alone. She wore a long white apron, long dress, a big bonnet. And she'd be watching out the window for Jim Andy to come and pay a visit. The children meant so much to her when they'd come home to see her. And when she'd see him coming, she'd go out to meet him. And she always come out to the buggy as he'd tie the horse. And she had that long apron and big white bonnet, high top shoes and big long sleeves. And she'd reach out her arms and say, Jim Andy, Mama's so glad you come home. Mama's so glad to see you. I'm glad you come home, son. Glad you come to see Mama. Jim Andy said, you know, one of these days, I'm going to leave this world. And said, when I do, I want to see Jesus. But standing there by Jesus, I want to see my mother. And he said, I believe with all my heart, my mother's going to reach out her arm and say, Jim Andy, I'm glad you come home. Jim, it's so good to see you. Mother's been waiting for you. I'm so glad you come home. I know you have a precious mother. Some of you sitting back there now with tears in your eyes. Your mother's in heaven. Some of you in the radio listen audience, your mother's in heaven. And there she's waiting for you on the other side. I thank God for my precious mother. Before she left this world, when I went to see her, She'd clap her hands. She'd say, son, I'm glad you come. I'm glad you're here. But said, don't you worry about me. This world is not my home, son. I'm just a passing through. She said, son, I can't preach, but you can. You go preach that gospel. I'll be praying for you, son. And don't you worry about me one minute. I'm happy. Praise the Lord. This world is not my home. Many times I've seen a shout up and down here in front of this pulpit stand. Raise a hand. Tears running down her cheeks, praising God. My mother loved God. Oh, how I'd like to see her. How I'd like to see her. I miss her so much. I'd go and say, well, I'm going to cheer mother up today. But brother, I always left cheered up. She'd always cheer me up. She knew exactly how to do it. And she's in heaven today waiting for me to meet her on the other side and the rest of the children. Some of my children, brothers and sisters, or maybe brothers are not saved. I tell you, it'd break my mother's heart. If they died without God. I've been praying for some for 40 years. I hope they won't go to hell. I hope they'll get saved. If all our children of my family don't go to heaven. My mother's going to be disappointed. And she done what she could. She prayed for them. And I hope that they'll get saved. It's not saved. And we'll all be together on the other side. And I know you have precious mothers. And you live for God and meet them on the other side. And it won't be long. The way time is moving now and it won't be long until you'll be meeting them. I'll be meeting mine. Time will soon be over for us down here. But thank God we have a better place beyond the blue. God bless you. Listen well. Stand to your feet. Our Father, I pray that you'll take the message today and use it. And our Father, stir hearts and speak to hearts today. And thank God for Jesus, first of all. Then we thank God for our precious mothers. God bless us and help us today in the invitation. In Christ's name, amen.
Debbie's going to play for us a couple of stanzas as she uh, plays for us. I want you to respond to the invitation. If you want to get saved, come back to God, join the church. For any reason you want to come forward, you come right on now while we wait with you. How about it? If you'd like to get saved, come back to God and join the church. You wouldn't find a better time. <laughs> 